This is day 15 of the shutdown, and the deadline for raising the debt ceiling is now just two days away. Joining us this morning from Washington are Republican strategist John Berkman and Democratic pollster Stephen Hankin. Thank you both for being with us this morning. Thank you, guys. Good so, to be here. Jack, I'll start with you. How close are they? Oh, I think they're close, but as a conservative, I, uh, I hope they're not close, and I'll tell you what I mean by that. I mean, we're concerned about overall deficit spending in the U.S. We conservatives feel that the only way to keep deficit spending in line, uh, the only way you have leverage is to keep the government shut down. I mean, it's very nice to do what's called in the U.S. a continuing resolution. I don't know what they call them in Canada, but it basically the deal will punt this to January or February. Congress will then uh, go home for the holidays and come back in January and do the whole thing again. I think a much better way to do this if I were John Boehner the speaker I urge him go home for the holidays let the equity markets crash force the president to the table get real spending cuts otherwise you know the US moves in the direction of Europe more debt more deficit every year whoa let the market crash uh, Stephanie you want to weigh in uh, not exactly sure how to react to something like that. Uh, sort of, I love my country so much, let's burn it down to the ground. Um, I mean, I think this whole situation has been a bit of a disaster for, for everyone uh, who's there. I mean, Republicans are taking a huge hit when it comes to public opinion, and most uh, Americans are putting the blame squarely on the Republicans. And while, you know, people can disagree on sort of the, the best approach or how, how big an issue some of these budget deficits are, uh, you know, the reason the debt ceiling has actually nothing to do with uh, saving money, uh, it's, it's just paying bills that have already been agreed to. So what the, what the House Republicans are doing right now is basically running up the credit card and then refusing to pay the bill. And this is really no way to run a government. Well, see, the problem if you take, okay, here's the problem with that. If you listen to this argument every year, it sounds oh so logical. You say, well, that's right, we need to pay our bills. The problem is, Stephen will come back next year and say the same thing, and the year after that and say the same thing, and 10 years from now and say the same thing, and maybe 20 years from now and say the same thing. And what happens in the meantime? Each year, the United States goes deeper and deeper and deeper into debt. So, what conservatives realize is the only, how do you stop this train? How do you get off the road to becoming like a European country? You've got to do it with force. There's no other way to get hey, Jack, Obama's attention. Jack, You've you got to shut the, the government down. Uh, sorry, i got to cut you off because you, you look at the polls. Is this strategy paying off politically for the Republicans? I mean, it seems as though most Americans are blaming the Republicans for this. And if there is a victory, Obama might be able to say it's because of his position, because he stood firm. Well, two things. No, it's not, it's not paying off politically in the short term. Substantively, I think it's the right thing to do. So, you know, maybe profiles and courage for somebody like John Boehner. But politically, I think in the longer term, I think it will pay off because I think if this goes on, if they can avert a deal this week and you go on another two or three weeks, once the stock market comes down, the House is out of town, the president's going to inherit that mess. So politically, at that point, Obama would be forced to negotiate. I think the long-term strategy plays very well for Republicans, such that come December, if the government is still shut down, Obama would be forced to agree to major spending cuts. Then maybe we could start to deal with something like raising the retirement age. We could start... Uh, I mean, they're going to come with, uh, with some sort of short-term deal, I'm sure, in the next few days, because you have to. I mean, uh, pretty much every economist agrees defaulting on the debt would be an absolute disaster for the United States and for the global economy. Uh, and then, you know, hopefully at some point in time, some adults will actually enter the room and, and start actually uh, hammering out a plan. I mean, both the House and the Senate have passed budgets. The Republicans have refused to come to the table over the last six months to actually come to a deal. And what this basically is, is the Congress refu is refusing to do their job on a regular basis. Basis. And you know, and what what they need to do is they need to come up with a, an actual budget plan because American businesses can't run from six week to six week period. They need a five term uh, plan going on so that they can actually look ahead and actually start making sound business decisions based on knowledge of what's going to be happening over the uh, over the next five years. Uh, so hopefully some adults will actually enter the room soon and we can get past this. All right, we'll leave it there for this morning and just remind everybody that Thursday is the uh, deadline for that debt ceiling. Stephen Hank and Jack Berkman. Thanks so much for your thoughts this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Just to head on.